Welcome to another episode of Grief Talk. Everything you want to know about grief and more. I'm your host, Vaughn Solis. As an author, life transformation coach, online instructor, and bereaved mom since 2005, I'll be bringing you great content that is informative, inspiring, and practical. Whether you have suffered a loss or other adversity, stay tuned and tapped in as I cover a variety of topics to help you get where you want to go on your journey to heal and grow. Today's guest is Rosalind Wei Jean. Rosalind is a certified holistic nutritionist, grief recovery specialist, and the author of several books. Discussing her experience with healthcare in China and Canada, Rosalind shares what it was like to live with the diagnosis of schizophrenia, was it even real? And the journey she took to holistically heal herself from long-term depression, anxiety, insomnia, and trauma after losing her father suddenly to cancer. Welcome to the show, Rosalind. I am so looking forward to this conversation. Hi. Welcome, everybody, and uh, I'm uh, very glad to be invited here to share my experience. Rosalind is going to be sharing her story today of a diagnosis of schizophrenia, which began in China, and she is uh, now part of Canada. And uh, so she's got the benefit of understanding two healthcare systems and how mental health disorders are treated in each system. So while we're not comparing, this show is all about ultimately understanding your mind, your body, and the importance of self-care. This is not an episode telling anyone to not seek medical care or not change the care that they're already receiving. It is simply awareness about one's self. And in many cases, myself living with a disorder, we do have to take responsibility for how we want to heal, manage our symptoms, not heal, and in all those cases, how we want to go about it. So I find, Rosalind, your story is extremely inspiring, and I'm going to get to it right away with my very first question for you to basically share a little bit about your story, your diagnosis of schizophrenia leading to your trauma, and uh, then I'll have some follow-up questions going from there. Yeah. Um, thank you, Bonnie. And uh, um, I, I would like to introduce a little bit about the background of my story. And just like you just said, um, introduced me. Um, I think this talk is uh, only talking about my real experience. And it was a uh, misdiagnosed schizophrenia mm-hmm. um, during a very special situation. So uh, I was born in um, a typical Chinese uh, uh, family. Parents are always quarreling to each other, uh, some kind of uh, not respecting to each other very well, and busy on work and uh, no time to take care of um, the only child in the family. So Mm -hmm. it's quite typical in my generation in China. Um, However, um, I I believe I was... um, suffered stress from the conflicts from the parental family from early age, but I didn't notice it at all. I just um, um, didn't uh, sleep quite well from uh, like a, maybe a teenager or even earlier, like eight or nine, um, but I didn't take it as a serious. Mm-hmm. And I don't think like the um, growing up um, environment might affect me psychologically, mentally, mm-hmm. and then will affect the maybe physical side of the health. Mm-hmm. And then when I go into went into the society, graduated from university, it's a normal to suffer uh, more stress and challenge in the society. So my insomnia developed into chronic insomnia, mm-hmm. and I didn't realize it's a big problem to my health. And I took uh, sleeping pills on a regular basis, but not every day. I know it's not good for every day, but as long as I have a stress and I couldn't sleep well, I will consult to sleeping pills. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, however, after um, about 10 years, more than 10 years ago, my father died from a cancer, passed away suddenly. It's very uh, sudden news for me. And uh, he passed away in uh, about uh, 
two weeks, he can't be cured anymore. Mm -hmm. So I got trauma. And then uh, my long-term insomnia can't get any help from uh, sleeping pills and developed into sleep deprivation. The first yeah. time it happened about uh, one year after my father passed away mm -hmm. and I couldn't sleep a single second for seven nights and, um, and days. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a torture. So at that time, I think I have to go to a hospital for my insomnia. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, at that time, in China, the medical system are quite different. So we don't have a family doctors. We have to go to a hospital, different departments, to consult any kind of our health problem. So it's uh, kind of um, difficult for me at that time. I don't know which department I should go. Mm -hmm. to take care of my sleep deprivation. So I went to the psychology department first. That was the root of the mis dis uh, misdiagnosis of my schizophrenia. First mm -hmm. of all, um, I think the uh, psychology department, there is no formal or professional certification on psychologist. Um, providing therapy in China. So it's a uh, quite different with the system uh, so can here I, in Canada. Can I just ask, so somebody providing uh, counseling, do they have any training at all for psychotherapy? It's a kind of a very simple uh, training. Even I, during the uh, recovery, I got those kind of uh, license to offering psychological therapy. So it's a very, it's just a three months training, online training, very wow. basic training. Again, so we're not here to criticize the system, just learn about it, because it really did impact you. This is the, the reason, Roslyn, you're discussing this is because of the impact of this misdiagnosis. It was a misdiagnosis. Uh, the psychologist is also the expert at psychology. And then he advised me, he can't treat me. I have to take a psychiatric medicine and go to another, um, it's a, another specialized hospital mm -hmm. to treating the psychiatric condition. However, um, the, this was a misdiagnosis. This is an important piece I want to understand that was really different in China. So when you went to the hospital, I want to say two things. First of all, I am not a sleep specialist, but Rosalind it does something to the mind and the body when you don't sleep. So that would have formed part of, by the time you went to the hospital, that would have formed part of the assessment and diagnosis, I'm assuming. But the other piece I just wanted you to speak out on very briefly before we turn to symptoms next, because those are very important, is this idea of taking companions or partners or family members to the doctor with you and that Am I correct that I read in, in what you said to me that their assessment counts towards a diagnosis as well? Yeah, my situation might be uh, different because um, there are some um, worries. Uh, when I suffered uh, um, sleep deprivation, that kind of feeling it was very weak, seeking for help. And if anyone can give me piece of words, maybe I, I feel a little relieved like that. It's very weak, yeah. helpless. Yeah. Uh, uh, so at that time, we can understand our families, uh, our friends also worried about us. However, for the psychological condition and the mental condition, actually, maybe 90% of the people or more normal people didn't realize or didn't understand the thing at all. Right, so their worry might affect their mood, and their mood might affect their expression and understanding. Such a good point. I I want to circle back to that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right now, I want to compare the actual symptoms at that time, and yeah. after I took the psychiatric medicine, so astonishing. So you're diagnosed with schizophrenia. 
let's start with the symptoms of schizophrenia. So we're not diagnosing folks. Anybody listening to this or watching this, I don't want you to go, oh my God, I, I have that symptom. No, this is just Rosalind's experience and your amazing in-depth research about schizophrenia, which you write about in your, I think, think it's your first book. Uh, yeah, I learned an awful lot about schizophrenia uh, in that uh, in that book. Uh, so, what are some of the symptoms uh, in general of schizophrenia, Roslyn? First of all, I'm not challenging the uh, diagnosis. Uh, when I was in China the first time, um, the psychiatric doctor prescribed me with olanzapine, mm -hmm. which is especially for the uh, schizophrenia. It's a strong psychiatric medicine stronger than um i think uh, than mm, the sleeping pills of course uh, and also stronger than most of the antidepressant uh psychiatric medicine so i'm not challenging her and uh, uh, at that time the first time he diagnoses me as early stage of schizophrenia she also told me that this is just a temporary treatment for you okay you have to um, rely on yourself, not rely on the medication. Because uh, later, when I feel the uh, side effects, I can think of what can I do now yes. for the situation of, of, of mine right now. It's almost like the psychiatric specialist when you were told, you need to take care of this. That put a little bug in your ear, which you remembered. However much time later, was it years later that you started the self-care? One and a half year later. At that time, I arrived in Canada. There are some different uh, situations. And uh, um, I don't know uh, what the attitude of uh, like uh, Northern American people think of uh, schizophrenia or the severe conditions. Not much. I previously thought as long as I was diagnosed of schizophrenia, Whatever the misdiagnosis or or anything, as long as I got that, I have to lifelong being a schizophrenia, and I have to lifelong to take the psychiatric medicine to treat it. However, what the uh, doctor told me made me believe it's not the truth. As long as for my situation, it's just a temporary situation, temporary treatment. Right. I have to think over about the situation changes and take care of myself, uh, maybe in, in a different thing, which is really good. Right now, um, let's talk back about the symptoms. At that time, the schizophrenia diagnosis was basically based on the seven days and nights sleep deprivation and that sleep deprivation triggered the major positive uh, symptom right now i acknowledge of schizophrenia which is uh, paranoid i did have uh, some paranoid mm -hmm. i linked uh, several things together in my mind and think of um, mm, the reason um, some of them are reasonable at that time i also believe some of them are not uh, realistic I, I know that. I understand that. Yeah. So you had these paranoid thoughts. Yes. At that time, that's the only one major positive symptom. However, after I take the psychiatric medicine, the olanzapine, immediately I felt relaxed and then I can fall in sleep. And yes. then the paranoid disappeared gradually. So this is a one tricking point about the medicine. Uh, after I re did the research a few years ago uh, during the uh, holistic recovery, actually this medicine has to be take effected in a week. So yes. my symptom, I felt I took the medicine and I'm safe. I was safe. What are some of the positive symptoms of schizophrenia? Even if you weren't experiencing them, you've done a lot of research about this. There are delusions, hallucinations, disordered behaviors, inappropriate reactions, lack of interest or pleasure, lack of motivation. Would that cover from your research and or experience pretty much the symptoms of schizophrenia in general? Yeah, those are the uh, most of the major positive symptoms of schizophrenia. I don't have any of them. You didn't have any of them except you experienced some paranoia 
Uh, yeah. Do you think that the paranoia came from the sleep deprivation? Yes, that's what I、uh, want to share with your audience. After I slept, and the paranoia disappeared gradually, a、uh, sleep deprivation and made me、um, uh, overthinking about something, and、yeah. then、um, resulted in paranoia. However, I only have insomnia, which is a kind of negative symptoms of schizophrenia. Negative symptoms means you can't.、Um, Diagnose schizophrenia through these symptoms,、mm-hmm. because like a、uh, depression, anxiety、yeah. might also have those kind of symptoms. It's、yeah. not a major like a positive, decisive、yeah. symptoms.、Okay. So I have a lot of negative symptoms. Like、um, I felt、uh, chronic fatigue and then depressed mood, anxious, and、uh, dull pains all over the body. Of course, insomnia. I just want to say too, though, struggling very early, early, early on after my daughter died from suicide back in two thousand five, I had I had post traumatic stress disorder immediately, but it wasn't diagnosed for nine years. So I'm just saying, your situation with schizophrenia, mine was no diagnosis, but when I would have all these weird things happen to my body, right, they would say it was stress. So what? Well, I'm sure that was part of it. I'm not saying that was all of it. I'm sure that was part of it. What I am saying is, one or a combination or all of these symptoms together can wreak havoc on our minds and bodies. Would you agree that I just don't think people understand any type of stress or anxiousness or even anxiety that is impacting one's life in any way? Can become much more serious and can be, in my view and experience, responsible for many more things in the body and the mind. Yeah, exactly. If you're experiencing anything like that, talk to your doctor. But also, I did a lot of research, like you did, Rosalind, for years on what I thought I might have, and it felt right. And eventually, I got help for it, but it took nine years. So I just wanted to put that in for audience members, if you are dealing with any of this. So. Understanding, putting the story together, and understanding now that you didn't have the major symptoms of schizophrenia, you had the sleep deprivation, which would have caused havoc on your body, and so on and so forth, right? And then you're taking the medication. What were the the side effects of the medication after I took the psychiatric medicine?、Uh, the good thing is I can sleep immediately. However, I just、uh, um explain it to you. It's not. It's not the actually the results of the medicine. It's psychologically, I felt safe. Yes, I believe medication can help me. I sleep immediately. You know what they say, Roslyn? It's like we create what we believe. I'm hoping that being able to sleep again actually restored some strength to your body.、Hmm. Were there other symptoms you were going through with this medication for however long you were on it? When I、um, reflected, I found there are some、um, positive symptoms of schizophrenia came up after I took the psychiatric medicine. So you're saying you took this medication, and then you actually started to exhibit symptoms of schizophrenia. Yes. Exactly, it, it's interesting. Let Let look at the, those positive symptoms. There are some of effects, lack of emotional expression, and、um, easy to be agitated, and then phobia. I started to afraid of、um, driving in height, and then、uh, but previously I never, I never have this. Even I when I was、uh, um, insomnia. A severe uh, uh, insomnia. I didn't have those kind of phobia,、mm-hmm. and I、um, I have a symptom of decreased speech, speech output, and decreased response. So what's happening with that? With I I want to jump on this decreased speech and response for a moment. Are you just afraid to speak? You feel you can't speak? Yeah, you are right. Two sides, two sides. One side is I I think deep in my heart, I felt I'm schizophrenia. I'm a psycho, so I don't I don't want to express. I don't want to because at that time I thought everything I think might be ill thinking. This is one reason, but the second reason is、um, 
when we dig into the pathology, pathology of the medicine, yeah. we can see this kind of olanzapine, it can control schizophrenia. It's because it reduces the blood flow in certain areas in our brains. So it naturally reduces our feeling responses and the mood responses. So it basically it made a person into a numbness. So in the work and social situations, did people find a change in you as you became, you know, quieter and quieter? And could you still be productive at work and socially in any other area that required you to be, uh, you know, engaged? Yeah, I believe because um, I'm a little different. Um, you, uh, not long after I felt uh, different, after taking a psychiatric medicine, I changed the environment. I immigrated to Canada. Okay. So the previous, uh, um, like my environment, had no opportunity to feel my change, only my family. However, I did believe those symptoms affected my social relationship. It's a different because new friends, they felt I'm extremely quiet, extremely mm -hmm. numb. At first, they didn't understand. Maybe it's just my um, extreme characteristics, personality mm -hmm. only. Because they at that time, they didn't know I'm taking psychiatric medicine. And yeah. nobody will dig into um, such details, whether this um, like a positive uh, symptoms was caused by medicine or previous, I already have had them, right? So you did move to Canada. You're still taking the medication when you arrive in Canada. Did you have a community? Did you know people when you came here or did you have to start all over again? And you're starting over again as what I will just call this severely weakened person. Yes, when I arrived in uh, Canada as immigrants, I got um, many support from uh, governments, like the uh, employment uh, uh, supporting. And they help us uh, to um, produce an um, English version, resume, and yeah. help us how to get a job in this society. Mm, government supported the English uh, lessons. Many of uh, those of things is really good. For me, not only for immigrants, yeah. for me as um, like a recovering from, uh, I, I can't see as a um, schizophrenia actually, but recovering from a severe psychological and a mental condition, suffering the um, side effects of psychiatric medicine to get into the society, to get a job yes. or to learn something is really important. So like you a had normal person. So you had to force yourself or at least you were required to go out and do certain things to settle into your new home which would have made you be around people and to try new things and look for work. So all the time though you're feeling different inside, numb inside. So you're just really putting on a brave face. But inside you're kind of like dying inside is a, like a dying however i yeah. have to push me out out of that uh, like a shell probably yeah. Yeah. um it's really helpful to acknowledge the difference of myself right now and uh, uh, the different uh, situation previously i shouldn't be like this uh previously i'm not like this yeah. and the actual attempts to fit yeah. into a normal society, normal um, uh, kind of relationship, actually push me out of the shell and help mm -hmm. me recover. Uh, another thing is even someone like me have to consult to the med medication for a while. Yeah. Don't put ourselves as um, patients forever. You just uh, um, to do the everything like a normal, maybe gradually maybe slowly, that's will really helpful to acknowledge first whether the psychiatric medicine is still helping me right now. Yeah, at that time, and we're talking around 2014 or so, so a few years ago, were you embarrassed uh, to think that you had schizophrenia? 
Yes, at that time, I I am, I am. I don't want to talk about it anymore. So you keep it all hidden. Yes. So I have to hide and I have to pretend to be a normal person. But this yes. really kind of helped me because I acknowledge the situation right now, and it's also improved me to fight with the side effects of a psychiatric medicine. And I also started from uh, I think.、Um, Uh, 2016. Um, I talked with withdrawal with my、um, family doctor here. He helped me a lot. I just want to say one thing to consider here, for me and for you. Not talking about anybody else. Both of us with a disorder of some type. But here's the thing: if we already are aware that we have to pretend to be. Someone stronger, someone healthy, someone different. I think right then and there we're candidates for being able to manage, if not heal from, whatever we're diagnosed with. You asked earlier, and I'm just going to pop it in here: what we think of schizophrenia in Canada. And while I cannot speak for others, my own experience, we're afraid of it. And I think when I met you originally、uh, a few months back, and I said to you, "Hmm, it's going to be a little bit brave of me to do a show on schizophrenia because we don't talk about schizophrenia here." Yes. Do you think that, from your perspective, we embrace schizophrenia? I'm talking about people now, not the medical professional, but just the society. Or do you think that we, they're they're crazy people? Yes, definitely. I think before I was diagnosed with schizophrenia, we stuck into、uh, chronic depression or anxiety, but mildly, we couldn't、um, like the previous me to ignore them. Or、mm-hmm. think I'm strong enough to handle all、um, the mental psychological symptoms or conditions、yeah. which didn't affect it physically. At that time,、yeah. we should consult、uh, for the、um, like a holistic way,、mm-hmm. or even the like a like a psychotherapy. However, as、uh, what whatever the reason is, but if we stuck into more severely.、Um, Condition of a、uh, mental health, we need to be stronger because we need to believe. First of all, it's just a temporary, not a, for lifelong. We have to take care,、uh, like you said, we have to take care of self to work us out of the situation.、Um, the strength is within us. So I just want to say here, Rosalind, we are speaking to people like you and me who are afflicted with something that may be temporary. We are not talking here for the more severe disorders that they can't differentiate what's going on within the body. But all I'm saying is, and I'm just questioning this. I'm not saying this is a fact. I'm just, I'm just asking if we have the ability to understand something's not right within us, and we may go, okay. I've got this disorder. I've got to either learn to manage it, or I have to try and heal from it. Right? There are different degrees of disorders and mental conditions and issues that impact us: stress, anxiety, depression, all of which are considered well, certainly anxiety and depression,、uh, mental disorders. Right? They they fall in the in the DSM. So anyway, let's move to self care. So you've got this awareness, and the reason we talked about this awareness is because you have to have the awareness, in my view, to heal, to do something, to make decisions, to make choices for how you're going to recover and rebuild your body and your strength. And for you,、um, how did that self care start? Yes, I think for everyone might have a different、uh, inspiration and、mm-hmm. the strength within to support them.、Uh, however, for myself, it's the responsibility of my daughter because when I was、um, first stuck into the sleep deprivation, my daughter was just three years old, and when she was growing up,、um, I think I have to take on. The responsibility of a mom, so I have to be, um, 
as much as possible as a normal parent to providing her um, the support. So I was thinking about the self-care at that time. And then I think between uh, in the self-care, it's very important um, like to compare the sympathies. Um, some of them, like me, maybe is newly developed sympathies. Some of, some, some of them might not. And the third party, like the family or friends, uh, their opinion were really good. Mm-hmm. Not like me. Mine is an extreme situation. But in a normal situation, the third party's opinion was really important. However, I have some suggestion when uh, people want to uh, self-care or um, recover, holistically recover, regularly to compare the symptoms is really important. And we really need the feedback from the other people. Maybe probably you can take uh, like uh, more than one doctors. Maybe one is a family doctor and another maybe is a psychotherapist. Mm-hmm. Don't rely on one third party only. It will make the um, opinion, I think, more objective. When I was in China, I was really helpless. Mm-hmm. So at that time, um, I, especially after the, I was kind of diagnosed by the uh, psychologist mm-hmm. in psychology department mm-hmm. with a psychiatric um, condition. I couldn't believe anything from my own cognition. At that time, I have to consult uh, another person, but it was not right. Even at that time, we have to have the opportunity to speak with the doctors individually. Here, and I won't speak for other people, but generally anytime I've gone to therapy, if it's therapy for myself, I just go by myself. Um, If I go and see a medical doctor, I go by myself. But I know when my mom was aging, for example, she's passed away now in 2010. But when she was aging, she was fairly cognitive, but she wasn't listening really closely to what doctors were telling her. You know, I'm talking about medical stuff. And so I would go with her to appointments for that sort of thing. So it might be a little bit of a different approach. It's an interesting question whether or not here in Canada people take someone with them to appointments. Uh, But I did want to say really quickly, and we talk a little bit more about self-care and the work that you do and your resources. You were saying earlier, and I just want to jump on this point just a little bit, the way we interact with those around us, and if they are in tune with something doesn't seem right. Uh, So if you have anxiety or you have post-traumatic stress disorder, I mean, we do some weird things. I don't want to scare anybody, but you know, we can fly off the handle. I mean, it's all different for different people. But the point is when something is wrong with us, when we become physically ill and we can see that in our loved one, we know something's wrong. So go to the doctor. And we treat them differently. That We treat them with care and compassion until they're better. But mental conditions are so uh, invisible. And we really don't have time to talk about this too much. But I know you say in your books, and if you want to know uh, more uh, about Rosalind's story in depth, uh, I'll have a link to her website and, and where you can find her books. Uh, but what other people expect from us and they don't even know what we're going through can greatly impact negatively our healing. I just want to throw that in. Again, we're not going to talk about that, but I just want to throw that in. It's very, very difficult for loved ones to understand mental disorders. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're almost left on our own. Even when you make the choice about, I need to get better for my daughter, even if it's not for ourselves, it's for our children, which is very powerful in, in and of itself because we're making the choice to want to be better. You almost have to take responsibility for your entire self-care. Would you say that's true for you? Yes, yes. The I think the major transition is I took the responsibility of myself and my family back. So yeah. when I was in China, it, it was, I, I think uh, you are uh, quite strong and uh, your way 
resulted in different um, pathway of our different of, of our maybe quite a similar situation. Maybe I just say because I at that time I uh, lost a uh, locus of control yeah. of myself. So every time in China I went to hospital talk with a psychologist or a psychiatry um, department. I was with somebody else, okay. but it's yeah. understandable. Yeah. Someone else might um, worry more than us. I respect that, Rosalind, for sure. Yeah, but I'm so proud. Of, I'm so proud of where you are today. So in your self-care, which began largely in Canada, did it? Yes. And uh, when I was in Canada, I started to notice the side effects, which were kind of uh, not previously I I. I had, and I noticed that I have to find some other way. And I started to take back the locus of control. I read the book uh, of uh, Dr. Uh, Peter Bragan. He was a psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. However, he advocated that psychiatric medicine was not the solution for mental condition. And even worse, maybe a toxic to our body. So I read some of his book and he said, um, we have to take the locus of control on ourselves, mm -hmm. not the medicine, not someone else, but we have to wisely um, get the support from uh, medication and get the support from the other party when we really um, did, did the um, uh, self-care. Right. Yeah. So you're saying, and also this Dr. Peter Bragan, does he suggest that some medication is okay and maybe just for a period of time, or is he completely no medication? Uh, I think uh, he was a uh, kind of radical. Right now he's uh, more than 80 something, mm -hmm. 80 years old, but mm -hmm. he was a psychiatrist. Uh, and right. uh, I think from uh, most of his uh, works, like uh, books and a YouTube channel, um, he advocated psychiatric medication was toxic. We can get out of the psychiatric uh, uh, disorder without psychiatric medicine. So that influenced you a lot, right? Like I turned to Bessel van der Kolk's work, who is a, a internationally renowned uh, psychiatrist specializing in trauma. And so it's so important to grasp that one thing that speaks to us, that one doctor, psychiatrist, whatever, that it, the work resonates and it lights a little fire in us. Now of that decision going, okay, so now are you thinking, I need to get off this medication? Yes, at that time, yes. Uh, I Because I... Uh, read his uh, works from 2019 only. Mm -hmm. Previously, I just uh, kind of thought thought of maybe there is uh, some holistic way to get back into normal. And also because uh, see the, the doctor in China gave me the medi medication and a diagnosis. Um, I, I believe she also indicated that my condition was a temporary. So you go, okay, this is temporary. I can heal from it. It wasn't a life sentence. And I want to get off the medication and do something else. So what has been the one or two major holistic uh, changes in your life that you cite as getting you on your path to healing? I think it's uh, um, when I understand, I believe every... Uh, health condition was uh, the result of a combination of a mind, a body, and a spirit. Uh -huh. And then uh, along this pathway, I tried many kind of uh, holistic uh, recovery approaches. Okay. Like um, mm, the physical way is uh, just uh, we talked about that. And nutrition is uh, very important because when we lost the sleep, Actually, our mind, our brain never rest. Or even when we suffered uh, about the poor quality of the sleep, mm -hmm. our our brain still alive. A part of, partly, when we were kind of a poor quality sleep, right? 
So those kind of brain, actual brain activities consumed more micro, micronutrition is a small nutrition, like the vitamins and the minerals. It doesn't consume much of the macronutrition, which mm -hmm. gave us energy to move, to grow, or to uh, exercise. So macronutrition, basically, we can acquire from the foods. Our brain activities need more mineral and vitamins. We have to supply more micro, the small ones. It, normally, it can't provide it from uh, our food. Okay, so so I just want to confirm. So micronutrients are composed of minerals and vitamins. Yes. And... Are you saying that the brain activity, which never stops, consumes those micronutrients? Yeah. Even it's more important because when we stuck into psychological or mental conditions, our brain actually more activated. So it's a, it can be a good thing, actually, if we supply the brain more micronutrition. Are you saying that from your uh, research that brain becomes overactive with a mental disorder? Yes. Always busy doing different you things. You have a com continuously come up with different thoughts, right? Okay. That's yeah. the brain activity. It's supported by uh, vitamin and minerals. Okay. Must supply them with more mineral and vitamins. Otherwise, um, the normal intake of uh, this micronutrition, the small nutritions, uh, will uh, de deprivate it to mm -hmm. support the brain activity from our body uh, physically. That's why uh, mental condition eventually will affect our physical health. So put really simply, in, in your work and in your personal life, um, your saving grace is you increase the minerals and vitamins, uh, so the micronutrients for better brain health. What else did you turn to? So you've got your nutrition, your, your a healthy diet, I'm assuming, minerals, vitamins. What else um, would you attribute to your uh, recovery? Um, yes, uh, when I took the, um, I don't want to talk about the, too much about the nutrition here. No. Uh, I just want to emphasize uh, from the body side uh, to a holistic recovery. We have to take care of all the substance within our body. And those kind of things, like a mood, is triggered by very tiny amount of hormones. And those hormones um, actually were regulated by micro, small nutrition. So besides the nutrition, what else do you think has been important for your recovery? I believe the mind is a powerful I think it's a kind of inspired by the Dr. Uh, Peter Bragan because he made me notice that in the past, mm -hmm. uh, I lost the control of myself. I completely depending on a uh, kind of a, a medicine. Like once I took the medicine, I believe I'm saved. Mm -hmm. And then I actually, I psychologically felt uh, secured and then mm -hmm. I slapped the immediately, which mm -hmm. is opposite to the pathology of that that medication, right? Mm -hmm. And then I also lost my control and I totally, depending on what the third party described my symptoms, mm -hmm. I don't believe my cognition at all. That was wrong. If I can be like you, like uh, uh, maybe still try to independently talk with my own problem with doctor, but maybe wisely support uh, from the third party might be a different uh, story for me completely. We all have different uh, approaches to being aware of our body, but let me just say it has taken me years and years to really understand myself and I'm still learning because I think if we're recovering from a disorder or the effects of a disorder, and in my case at the moment, I'm managing it. I'm very open about living with PTSD and gives me anxiety and so on. Uh, I've learned to manage it much, much better, but I'm continuing to learn new things in, 
in how to manage myself. And I, but I believe the mind is very important. I do acknowledge sometimes things can happen in our brain and they do happen in our brain when we have a disorder that we can't necessarily control. If we're lucky enough that we can overcome a mental disorder, a lot of that I think has to be attributed to our own involvement in our choosing to recover. It's a personal belief. Uh, there are some people I acknowledge that will never reach that stage and sadly may live with something that's impacting them like that in, in very, very serious ways forever. I acknowledge that. I also think that so many people live with depression and stress and anxiety in today's world that, well, I won't go so far as to say we all have some kind of disorder. I think it can be very easy to slip into one, even if temporarily. And w we have to be extremely mindful about our environments, how we conduct ourselves, who we associate with, how we are conducting ourselves within our relationships, within every area of our life. So your healing is down to nutrition, as we said, the mind. Do you meditate? Do you live a really calm and balanced and, and just try and keep yourself in that state where you can manage yourself in any situation you find yourself? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's come into the third part of this uh, health triangle spirit. Yes. I believe from our modern understanding, from spirit side, is more like a micro energy, because mm -hmm. everybody uh, we interact with each other, but actually we all possess micro energy. So um, I think um, my holistic uh, recovery comes from sort of a micro energy healing, like mm -hmm. a crystal and uh, like the uh, music. Um, when I was a uh, recover uh, during 2019 to uh, 20, maybe 2021 or something, mm -hmm. um, at that time, I suffered a third time of, uh, I, I believe I was about to, come into another sleep deprivation because of the second uh, divorce and the separation. So those kind of uh, negative energy affected me. So I, I kind of uh, um, got uh, insomnia again, kind of. Mm -hmm. And then at that time, I took the therapeutic music as my life background, even when I was asleep. Mm -hmm. When I tried to go into sleep, I tuned a very low volume but never stopped in my life the mm -hmm. the music Ex except that like maybe I, i'm in a call phone call or something or mm -hmm. talk with someone mm -hmm. but never stop so i believe music also pr provided us um, like a frequency mm -hmm. so tune our micro en energy mm -hmm. for me i think uh, we can more scientifically uh, understand the spiritual healing from micro energy. That's my opinion and uh, yeah. experience. Yeah. So you do have resources. I'm going to be putting a link uh, to your website where people can find uh, resources. Uh, I know that you have uh, information on Chinese breath exercises. You've also got information on uh, cellular uh, orthomolecular nutrition. So people can go to your website or I'll have your email uh, as well listed in the description to contact you more if they want to learn uh, further about your experience. Uh, your books are on Amazon uh, as well. Can people find more information about your, uh, you've got a trilogy right now, but I know you're continuing to be publishing more books uh, in part of this uh, Paradox series. Can they find uh, more information uh, about your books and where to buy them also on your website? Yes, yes. Um, just find uh, rosalinhui.com. Uh, I'll have that. And I can uh, say that I have read your first three books and I loved them. And it gave me huge insight into uh, your background, we are recognizing there are some cultural differences that you have experienced in two different countries, uh, which I think is is maybe to your advantage in some way. And, you know, I'm honored to uh, have had this discussion with you to be really open about schizophrenia, whether you know, it was misdiagnosed, whether it was diagnosed and it was temporary, that's up to you to know your body. I do believe when we want to be in tune with our bodies, we know what's 
wrong with our bodies. And uh, I have met countless people who have healed themselves from conditions that other people would not think possible. And so uh, in this case, I just am very, very grateful, Rosalind, for you coming and sharing your story. And hopefully we can help somebody uh, out there who might be struggling with something themselves uh, mentally um, or even in another a physical uh, situation where don't be afraid to go get medical advice. You don't have to take one opinion. You can well, hopefully get a, a second opinion. It's hard getting a doctor here, though, you know that. Um, but doing a lot of research and above all, just making a commitment to take care of yourself. You dive much deeper into your story in your books. Is there anything else that you'd like to add for the audience uh, before we close this out? Yes, you and me both have diagnosed as mental conditions. Mm -hmm. But from my um, experience, I don't think a gene was a problem for mm -hmm. this mental condition. I just want to quick, quickly describe the situation. My big uncle and uh, my mom, I think my mom never diagnosed as a schizophrenia, but he did have a hallucination. Mm -hmm. um, and my uh, big cousin, my big cousin also diagnosed it as um, schizophrenia and was in the hospital for several years. Yeah. However, three of them, the symptoms are opposites. Mm -hmm. So like, um, okay, you say maybe um, um, the problem of uh, blood pressure was because of a gene. However, two of them, in my family at least, two of them are kind of high blood pressure and one of them are low low blood pressure mm -hmm. so how come is it because the mental condition is become because of the gene i don't think so maybe we think about that kind of nurturing as a uh, plays more roles on our health than nature than than we inherited yeah, I want to uh, very quickly uh, just add to this that I think, I don't know this for a fact, but I think in, in the West, we very much scientifically believe in genetics and passing down diseases and so on through genes. And obviously it's been proven in, in areas for sure. So I'm on the fence uh, about I, I, I tend to agree with you that I don't look at my health and what's going to happen in my body, what I'm going to be afflicted with. I take full responsibility. If I get something, I'm going to own it and go, I got it. To me, I'm not going to go, oh, I got it because my mom or dad, or I don't live in fear that my mom or dad had this or that and so on. But again, I totally respect that there probably is a place for this in science and in many, 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 many things people suffer with. But when we have a spiritual approach to life and with, with that comes self-responsibility, it does in some way present this duality of thinking where, well, even if I have that, I should be able to cure myself. Exactly. And it's something that I'm deeply, deeply interested in right now in exploring. And I am exploring that with guests uh, now on my podcast uh, who, like yourself, have healed themselves from things others would not think possible. And so stay tuned. None of us have the answer. We can only live life for ourselves and what's right for us. And I respect everybody's opinion and experience, but we do learn from our stories. And I love feeling inspired. And um, I love those who inspire. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I love you to provide me such a good opportunity to Yo. express my experience. You're so welcome. And I do encourage anyone to you read uh, Rosalind's books because they're very informative. And you are coming out with more books, aren't you? Yes, yes. I'm coming up uh, maybe more spiritual side. So thank you again, uh, Rosalind, for coming on the show. I really, really uh, do uh, appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much. 